this is going to be about the reprobate mind. And I'm going to title it The Reprobate Mind Machine. This world is a machine that the devil has cranked in overdrive to produce reprobate minds. A reprobate is not just a person. It's also a state of the mind, as I'll show you later. But the devil has the machine turned up at a high level. He's trying to make production. He's trying to crank out as many reprobate minds as he can before it's time to punch the clock and begin his staycation in an eternal flaming abyss. But you know what the devil does when he's on the job with the machine cranked up producing these reprobate minds? The first thing he does is he teaches men to hold the truth in unrighteousness. In Romans 1, 18 through 19, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For years now the devil has been skipping his breaks. He doesn't even pack a lunch. He's been on overdrive trying to get people to reject the word of God. And when you lose your Bible, you lose your mind. When people never have a Bible in their life, they never have the right state of mind. When anybody gets saved, they have to get brainwashed, literally. Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind's got to get fixed. But the devil, he's got these seminaries and educated men to train younger men to hold the truth in unrighteousness. If he can get you to doubt and question and reject the truth in the King James Bible, then he puts a damper on your faith. Then he can get you to where you become your own final authority. He gets you to a point to where you can stand in judgment of the scriptures and can twist them to suit your belief. And when Christians are changing the Bible and holding the truth and unrighteousness, what do you think the world, the lost world, is doing with the Bible? Even worse, they don't even believe the Bible, period. The greatest deterrent to keeping your mind right is the Word of God. It's about a state of mind. This nation hates the Word of God. So the devil is pulling doubles, trying to get the people of the world to hate the Bible. That's what's standing in the way of them becoming a reprobate. If he can get them to just do away with the scriptures, he is in fast pace to produce a world of reprobate minds. The next thing is he teaches men to reject the evidence of a creator. If he can do that, uh, he's on his way. It says in Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him... From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Any man who is in his right mind, even if he has never heard the gospel, he can look up at the clouds, the stars, the sun, the moon, the trees, the sunset, the mountains, the seas, and see that there had to be an almighty creator. He's without excuse. The invisible things of God are seen. In the creation. Even if he doesn't know anything about God, he would look up at the sky and realize there is a being out there bigger, wiser, mightier, and stronger than he is. And for thousands of years, the devil has been working through his shift and letting the devils go home early so that he can do his handiwork on the minds of educated men. He's tricked them into believing that there is no God, he has tricked them into believing in a big bang evolution that aliens created us that we aren't even really here that it's all just a dream or anything to make them doubt the existence of god or just to put little things in their way to make them not even acknowledge god if a man doubts the existence of god then he becomes his own final authority if he doubts the existence of god then you don't have to worry about him getting a mind wash from the scriptures because he's never going to pick them up because the only time he would ever pick one up is to find so-called errors in the scriptures to make other people doubt the scriptures like he does and if the devil can get your mind to think that there is no god then he has you on the assembly line and getting the parts necessary to form a reprobate mind in you 
So if he can get men to hold the truth and unrighteousness, they doubt the scriptures and they become their own final authority. If he can get men to doubt a creator, they become their own final authority because there's no God to answer to. And then men just start doing what's right in their own eyes, what's right in their own mind. And the next thing he wants to do is produce an unthankful generation. In Romans one twenty one, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The devil has been working the weekends. He's been working overtime trying to get men to be unthankful for what God has given them, and the Lord causes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. But they're unthankful. Lost people are unthankful. Safe people are unthankful. If a man is unthankful for the things he has, then he doesn't ever stop to thank God. If he can get, if the devil can get you to stop being thankful, then he can get you to think you got everything on your own, that it was all about you, what you did. He gets you to start thinking that all you need is you and your abilities, your talent, your job, your stuff, even though there is a huge hole in every man's heart that only God can fill. And the devil worked overtime without pay, installing the unthankful part in the brains of men. And also, he's made a know-it-all generation. In Romans one twenty-two, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The devil is a workaholic. He thinks he's some great one. He is said to be wiser than Daniel. And he, he implants little tidbits of worldly wisdom into men to get them puffed up in their knowledge. They think they're so smart, but they are simply educated fools. They think they are making progress towards a new Atlantis. They think they're making progress to eternal life through technology, living in outer space, and just increasing in transportation and communication. But they're only making progress going back to the jungle because they won't go back to the Bible. They are a know-it-all generation that actually know nothing, just men that are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's like the smarter they get, the more dumb they become. But these are people, next, who worship things. In Romans one twenty three, it says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Every now and then, the devil stops for religious reasons. He wants to show the minds that there is room for religion. He doesn't care if you worship a God as long as you don't worship Jesus Christ. He planted the seed in people's minds that they can worship any God and be fine. They could even worship an image of their self. And a lot of people have false gods and don't even know it. If the devil can keep your mind off of the true God and on another God, then he's closer to making production. He's closer to putting you out as a reprobate mind. The next thing, sex perversion. The devil knows that sex is a powerful thing, a very powerful thing. It's like alcohol. You can give yourself over to it and it gets a tight grip on you. And men who struggle with fornication many times just give themselves over to it. In Romans one twenty four through 26, it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And if you don't know what those three verses are about, those are teaching against homosexuality. If the devil can convince you that love is love, and that it doesn't matter what gender you claim to be or what gender you claim to be attracted to, he can automatically make you a Bible rejecter. Because then you are faced with the Word of God and your lifestyle. The Word of God versus your lifestyle. If He can make you think that your lifestyle, even though it's wicked, is acceptable, then He can make you a doubter of the Scriptures. And you automatically won't want anything to do with the Scriptures because it condemns your entire lifestyle if you're a sodomite or a lesbian. And then you become your own final authority. And the only thing keeping you from becoming a reprobate is the Scriptures. You don't even want to think of God or have him on your mind, because then you would be thinking about a higher power that doesn't approve of your sin, and then you have somebody to answer to beside yourself. Romans one twenty seven. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, men with men, 
working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So it's unnatural, it's unseemly, and you'll pay for it. You'll receive the recompense of the error. The devil will then try to convince you that God is evil and ungodly and make you think that wrong is right and that right is wrong. He'll make you put evil for good and good for evil. Blue's Clues, the TV show, is doing that right now. They have smiling faces. They have bright colors. They got good production, little children, friendly characters, spreading the false sodomite gospel and trying to convince the kids that it doesn't matter who you're in love with. So they put drag queens on there and celebrate Pride Month. This is the devil's new project. It is his vision for success. Get the kids' minds while they're young. And now finally, in Romans 1, it mentions the reprobate mind. And it says in Romans 1, 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. If the devil can get you to not even retain God in your knowledge, you are given over to a reprobate mind. You're going to be given over. It's a state of mind that people get into. They get in, in this state of mind where they don't want to know God, they don't want to think about God, they don't want to be saved, and they don't want to think about getting saved. It was all their own choice, not God's. It was all their own doing. And don't get it twisted. It isn't God. Who won't save them? It isn't that they, it's, it's that they themselves don't want God. God wants them. He wants to save them. But they don't want God. They don't even want to retain him in their knowledge. A reprobate, it's not that a reprobate can't get saved. It's that when someone is in that reprobate state of mind, they won't get saved. It's a free will choice and they will refuse. If a person doesn't want anything to do with God, then they certainly aren't going to come to him for salvation. And instead of getting saved and being filled with the things of God, the devil fills them with other things. In Romans one twenty nine through 32, it says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, does the reprobate mind have to be a permanent thing? Can it be undone? I believe it can be undone, but it's, I mean... When somebody gets so far, it's unlikely. Is it impo impossible for someone who has a reprobate mind to be saved? I don't believe it's impossible. I believe somebody with a reprobate mind can be saved. Because remember, it was always their choice to not choose God. God allowed them to reject Him. And even though He gave them over to a reprobate mind, it doesn't mean they can't be brought back. If that person, by a miracle hits rock bottom, and realizes their guilt of sin, in need of a Savior, then they could come to Jesus Christ and He would save them immediately. If the wickedest person you know of right now, whether it be Hillary, Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie, Ellen, any of them people, obviously they're reprobates. They want nothing to do with God. I mean, that's the closest as I can you can get. If they're not, then I'm shocked. But if they came to Jesus right now, he would save them. But the thing is, it's very unlikely because they want nothing to do with God. That's why you don't want to get yourself in this shape of just continuing in your own way, being your own final authority, and getting further and further away from the Scriptures. I mean, lost people want nothing to do with the Scriptures. But I mean, there's different kinds of lost people. You've got lost people that are extremely wicked and you've got lost people that are just so caught up with maybe their job or something like that that they don't e even think think about God. But I mean, you don't want to be just get so far away from God to where you get into this mindset of being an atheist and believing in evolution and seeking to destroy the scriptures. Somebody like Bill Maher, people like that, that's a different kind of lost person. That's not like the average Joe that gets up every morning, pays his bills, takes care of his family, but he's lost. You know, that's different 
than someone like Ellen DeGeneres. You see what I'm trying to say? But look at 1 Kings 6, 9 through 11. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You may have been at one time an atheist or a lesbian or a sodomite, but God saved you. You had a change of mind. You see, when somebody gets saved, they have a change of mind. And a reprobate who's in that reprobate state of mind can have a change of mind and turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. To say that someone you classify as a reprobate couldn't be saved if they wanted to because if they change their mind about the Lord Jesus Christ and turn to him for salvation, if you say that they can't because of a certain sin in their life or because they are a reprobate, that's a big error on your part and that would be in contradiction of whosoever will. Romans 10.13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever whether they're a reprobate or whatever they are. A reprobate can be saved. Is it likely? Most times, probably not. But they can be. God will take anybody. In 2 Timothy 3.8, it says, Now as Jannes, Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Once again, you can see that being a reprobate has to do with the mind. Men of corrupt minds. It says men of corrupt minds. They have been given over to a reprobate mind. Can they be saved? Of course. But they would have to have a change of mind, which is something that we all had at salvation. I changed my mind about myself. All that time I thought, well, I, 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 can, I can be good enough to get my own self to heaven. Mm. That night I got saved, I was like, nope, I'm a sinner. I got to turn to Jesus Christ. Only he can save me. I can't save myself. But we know they don't retain God in their knowledge. This doesn't mean that if they turn to God, that He wouldn't save them, though. If they say reprobate concerning, if they stay reprobate concerning the truth, then they won't be saved because they're not going to come to Him for salvation. It's all their choice. It's all they're doing. There are plenty of testimonies from homosexuals and extremely wicked people who have changed their mind concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and concerning the gospel. And they have believed on Him and they are saved. There's testimony after, after testimony you see of somebody used to be an atheist, somebody used to be an evolutionist, somebody used to be a homosexual. To teach that a reprobate can't be saved if he comes to Jesus Christ with a believing heart goes against the scriptures completely and if that were true then whosoever will is no longer whosoever will they are the ones who resist the truth the reprobate does god isn't re going to refuse them if they come to him in titus 1 16 it says they profess that they know god but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate not only does a reprobate hate your god he hates your godly works. But their own works are all done in vain glory for vain reasons and for a show. Like the Pharisees who do their works in front of men to be seen of them. A good mark of a reprobate is someone who despises your sincere, good, and genuine works and calls it evil. They call evil good. They call good evil. For example, if they see a pastor preach on sin and hell and death and judgment, they say, well, that's evil. He's mean. He's, he's ungodly. They say that that's self-defeating. Their idea of good works is to spread love by accept, accepting everything and everybody. But that's not love because true love hates some things. If you love babies, you hate abortion. If you love little kids, you hate sexual sins because sexual sins always lead to a kid getting hurt in just about every case, even adultery. You know, those parents that are committing adultery, they have kids. You know, it always leads, to, most times, to a kid being hurt. True love hates some things. God is love, but there are things that God hates. But this has been just a quick 
little study on the reprobate mind. You don't want to you don't want to get in in, the, in a state of mind where you become your own god and you become your own final authority. If you're not saved, you need to come to Jesus Christ right now. Change your mind about the gospel. Change your mind about the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you think that Jesus Christ was just a good man, but Jesus Christ is God and he died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. And he will save you if you come to him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.